we've been looking at solar quite a while and we finally made the decision recently to go with it but in the beginning I wanted to show you how I came about it with a little simple spreadsheet here the uh, first thing that most places will ask is how much is your consumption or what do you plan on having out there and you have to make those decisions uh, I purchased a little kilowatt meter and plugged things into it ran around the house checking out my freezer wattage and you know coffee pot and all kinds of stuff uh, just trying to see what it would cost and I came up with these from that kilowatt with these numbers um, some of this like uh, we're guess I don't have that here uh, I went on the website and picked one up and seen what it was but most of it is actually what I had and what I plan to use I did test it with a kilowatt meter quantity the watts it would use and then the number of hours that it would be in use gives me a total um, like a laptop here at, at 20 watts an efficient one um, it's going to be 20 an hour times 12 hours 240 watts totaled all these up and my daily wattage usage would be 2508 2500 I looked at uh, a 12 volt system I looked at a 24 volt and I finally decided on the 48 volt for future expandability and I didn't want to be buying two systems uh, one for now and another down the road this one gives me room to grow I sized it up on that uh, wattage with a two-day runtime in mind and also in mind that you any battery bank you don't want to go below 50 percent for cycling the battery it's kind of like smoking they said you know you smoke a cigarette you give up five minutes of your life or whatever um, same thing here uh, you only get so many cycles in a battery before they're useless so I try to avoid that as much as possible and the other thing uh, I don't you don't want a heavy charge or a heavy draw on your battery bank that also reduces it considerable uh, try to keep that in mind I like this coffee pot up here a well pump anything like that try not to have them on your battery bank they'll last many more years um, with that said so here we had uh, 20,000 kilowatts I'm sorry watts and half of that would be 10,000 assuming I'd never cycle so I get 10,000 usable watts and I took that and then I took a percentage of how long I could run that at 25 percent or what the value would be uh, I can see the formula up here what that value would be for usable watts that on a two-day runtime and everything and that and that kind of comes down uh, I'd like to be in the 25 percent discharge rate in other words, 75% still good, and when I reach that 25%, I'm going to do a slow charge. Um, even the bulk, I'm going to have it down towards the battery recommendations. Another thing you have to look at is what does the battery manufacturer recommend on your charge? Not what your solar charger can do, nor what the inverter can do. Look what the battery likes to accept. I come up with uh, these numbers, and that was suitable for me. Um, for that total amount of wattage to replace that 2,500 watts uh, looking at a 275 watt panel that estimate to replace that in one hour would be nine panels well we get good three hours on a national or not a national on a yearly average we get about three hours of good solar sun winter gonna be a little less summer's gonna be quite a bit more but that's an average uh, gave me three panels I said half the time it's gonna be cloudy don't know but just a guess rough numbers this whole spreadsheet just rough numbers that gave me six panels it takes more power to store that power to create that power from what you took out of there so I added a 20 percent loss efficiency it's gonna take 20 percent more power to replace the what I took that brought me up to seven panels almost 7.3 however you want to look at it there rounding down came to seven rounding up came to eight so my initial thought was eight panels a string of two per would give me a total of eight panels um, with four strings that would be kind of the maximum well 
There's another spreadsheet I'll have to show you. There's another guy on YouTube that has some excellent documentation. And I'll show you on that on another on another little clip here. Uh, when we really start diving into the the magnum and the arc charge, the remote panel and the battery uh, monitor that comes with it. It's pretty impressive on how you want to size it and what you need to put for your inputs. And that was a hard lesson learned. I really had some stumbling blocks. Fuel cost, etc. Another time. For now, that's just a basic how I came up with my system. And we shall see how this all pans out. Move on into some videos now. Show you what I have. 20. Splits in the panel there, 110 on one leg, 110 on the other. Every other breaker is on a different leg. That's typical in a house. I do have some mess to clean up. I got that wire there, which was used to be my old 110 in to that panel. Just plugged into a suicide plug outside. Uh, just a male adapter out there, extension cord plugs into the generator. That's how it used to be, so I have to rip that out yet. Um, it's dead. There's nothing connected to it. But the possibility exists if somebody didn't know that they could plug in, so we got to take that out. But I'm just tickle pink to be able to have this uh, up and running. This monitor, this remote battery kit, I tell you, I really like that. And this uh, control panel here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It doesn't look like it's going to focus on it. There it goes. You can see my draw. One amp. No, that might be 1.9. It might be one amp. I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to monitor this to see what it comes out. Got my favorites here. Let's see if I can... Standing at 50.7, 51 is pretty much fully charged on a 48 volt system. Still showing 100%. Shows I've used a total of 3 amps so far. And it's only been online probably, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. So that's just a quick summary. Should have took my time and showed you the wiring inside. I may take the panel off and do another one, but wouldn't be an Alaskan cabin without duct tape. I got to get some good cable metal hangers. I'm gonna hang these cables like they should be, screwed into the plywood and everything. And now that the wiring's all in, I can get serious about putting some cedar or birch paneling or something like that on the inside. Uh, just wanted to give a quick rundown on what we have going here. Alright, so here we are. We woke up the next morning. We're sitting at 48.8 volts, uh, drawing about 3 amps, or it's inverting from 3 amps. I think our load is 1 amp. What I'm not understanding is the lower voltage, and then if I go to my favorites here, battery state of charge is saying 95%. But according to voltage, that's nearing 50%. I think 48.4, somewhere around there. It's like 60%, 50% on the battery voltage charge. So I'm not putting two and two together there. I'm trying to figure out what, why the big difference. Well, last week we had some winds come through. Said it was 80 miles an hour with 110 gusts. Couldn't have felled that tree any better if I tried. It was one that was rotten. I knew it was. I was afraid it was going to snag. It wanted to lean. It was leaning this way. And I was afraid it was going to snag and nose. Fell on its own. Completely missed everything. And I was pretty happy for that one. Luckily all the bad trees were away from the property or I should say the cabin you can see in there there's one he didn't make it over there there's 
root of another you can see sticking up. That one surprised me. That one I thought was a pretty healthy tree and that thing snapped pretty darn low. I'm used to seeing uh, pine trees snap, you know, midway up on high winds. But that one snapped really, really low. That mess over there is from clearing the property and I cut that one a couple weeks earlier. So that one's my doing. Ironically, the trees that did fall, we were talking about taking them out. Nature kind of did it for us. These trees are about, I think that one, not too sure if that was one of the taller ones. I think it was, they're about, I used the range finder it showed about 70 some feet for the tallest ones like I know that one up there I think that's the one I ranged he was 72 so hopefully we can get a dozer in here and